I started my Linux journey on a distro that runs on Wayland. Admittedly, I never tried X11 and as a result, I never knew the difference. And all the videos I made so far about Wayland versus X11 were purely driven by my wish to understand that difference. And what is this all fuss about when people are politely disagreeing about which one is the best? Last week, I started to think about the next Wayland slash Linux video idea, and I thought back to that discussion about both display servers. And if I think back when I was just learning about this, I realized that I thought I understood the difference. But thinking about it now made me realize that back then I did not fully understand it. And it seems I'm not the only one. And I wanted to share this realization. But you know, I almost didn't film this video. Because when I was writing my video outline, I started doubting myself. Is this video even worth it? It might actually be common knowledge. And here I am, the dummy who tried to pretend to know the information people wanted to know. But then a few days ago, as on cue, I got this comment. And this spoke directly to the doubts I had in my mind about making this video at all. So someone asked, can Wayland run without a compositor? So thank you for the comment. It's only one person commented, only one person asked, but there are probably hundreds out there who wondered the same thing and just didn't say it out loud. And the truth is many people know how to use Linux, but not everyone knows how it works. And I'm no exception, except that I might be willing to learn a little more than the average person. And Wayland versus X11 is one of those deceptively deep topics that feels basic until you try to explain it. So back to the question, can Wayland really run without a compositor? And the short answer is no, it can't. Unlike X11, which can technically do that, and in the older days it did, Wayland is built around the idea of compositors. But it doesn't come with one, it expects one. In fact, Wayland doesn't draw anything to the screen at all. It's just a protocol, a set of rules. An instruction for clients, your applications like terminal or the browser window, to talk to your display server, which in Wayland's world is the compositor. And the compositor also acts as the window manager. In X11, on the other hand, we had X server, which handled the input and drawing, and then the window manager and the compositor were sort of optional, where the window manager was responsible for controlling the window's layout and the compositor was a nice feature to be able to have things like shading and transparency and things like that. So sometimes when people say Wayland, often what they actually mean is a Wayland's compositors like Gnome's Mutter, Kitty's Kwin, or Sway. This might sound confusing because in a way it is. If in X11 the compositor was optional, in Wayland it's a must-have. It's the thing that's doing all the heavy lifting, managing windows, rendering, input, output, everything. So if you ask, can Wayland run on its own? What you're really asking is, can I have a Wayland system without a compositor? And the answer is no. Nope. That's because Wayland is minimal by design whether it's a blessing or a curse. It lets composers implement extensions however they want. That means Gnome, Sway, Kwin, or other composers, they all follow Wayland's protocol, but they may implement different features or the same feature, but differently. And this behavior is not a bug, it's a feature, but also a little bit of a headache if you're trying to understand how everything fits together. Take Fedora, for example, a very popular Linux distribution. If you install Fedora KDE Spin, by default, it ships with the KWIN Wayland Compositor. This gives you a more traditional desktop environment like floating windows, animation, and panel at the bottom. But if you're more into the minimalist tiling window manager vibe, use keyboard for everything instead of using your mouse, then you can just install Sway Compositor instead. Sway is a Wayland Compositor too, but it's modeled after the i3, a popular tiling window manager from X11. So under the hood, you're still on Wayland, but the whole experience changes based on which compositor you use. This is the part which I didn't fully grasp at first. Wayland isn't the experience the composer is. Wayland isn't a standalone system. It's not just the replacement for X11. It's a whole different philosophy, a different framework. 
and everything depends on the composer you pair it with. Wayland sets the rules of the game and the composer decides how the game is played. So there we go. Let me know if you run into any other unresolved misunderstandings about Wayland and Linux systems in general, and I'll try to make sense of them for you. Your comments really help me to create content that you want to watch. And on another note, this video is also available as a blog post, because sometimes if you want to quickly revisit whatever I said in this video, it might be more convenient to quickly glance over the blog post to remind yourself of certain things rather than rewatch the whole video. So thanks for watching and I see you soon. And the next video is going to be about the recent developments in my PhD program, life updates, and that sort of stuff. See you next time.